Hearthside was built in 1810 by Stephen Hopkins Smith, and Stephen lived here. Uh, just he grew up right across the street. He uh, had there were 13 uh, brothers and sisters in his household, and he was not from a rich family at all. How did he get to build this house? Well. He uh, was a very well-educated man, and he went to work for a Providence merchant. Well, while in Providence, I guess, he met a young lady. And this is how the legend goes of how he ended up building Hearthside. The legend has it that he fell in love with a young socialite, probably from the east side, possibly from Benefit Street. And she made it known that while he was a very, very nice young man, very well educated, very handsome, she was really looking for a suitor who could really build her the finest house in Rhode Island. Well, Stephen did not have that kind of money to satisfy her needs, so he decided to try his luck at a lottery ticket. And he purchased a lottery ticket, we don't know how much it was for, but the winnings were $40,000. Stephen had the good fortune of winning that money. He thought he had it made. He would take his winnings and build her this finest house, and he did. He started it in 1810. It was completed in 1814. Now when the house was completed, he went to Providence. He picked her up in a buggy. He brought her up Great Road. This was quite a distance from Providence, even though it's only seven miles, but in a horse and buggy, it was quite a trip. They came upon Hearthside in the distance. She saw it. She said, my, what a beautiful house, but who would ever want to live way out here? This was wilderness. This was surrounded by farms. Here was this magnificent stone mansion among all this farmland, and she was from the city. Well, Stephen turned the buggy around, and he brought it back to Providence, dropped her off, came back here, and sadly, he never married, and he never even lived here at Hearthside. Stephen moved into a very, very modest little house right down the street from, uh, from Hearthside. He did run a business right across the street from Hearthside, which was a textile mill, it was built of the same stone as Hearthside, and sadly, he was also a failure at business. He died a bachelor at age 74, and he was buried right down the street at the Salesville Friends Meeting House, where you can find his grave today. So that story is how we call this the house that love built. Ripley's, believe it or not, likes to call it the heartbreak house. The most recent owners of Hearthside were the um, Andrew Mowbray family, Andy, his wife Pen Penny, um, and there was Drew, Sherry and Stuart. They owned Hearthside for 40 years. You can imagine what it was like growing up in a house like this. Children running through 10 rooms in a wonderful attic to play hide and seek in. Um, I grew up with the Mowbray children and so it was really interesting for me to come into this house many, many years later and help to preserve it. Um, I would have never guessed it. I really, as a little girl, never got to come in this house. I only got to admire it from outside. But my family did own the farmland all around the house, so I spent uh, a lot of time here admiring it. Lincoln purchased Hearthside from the Mowbray family in 1996. The intention by the town was to preserve this house. Um, they also, at the same time, purchased a number of other historic properties along Great Road. And unfortunately, the town just does not have the money to put into preservation of old buildings, nor programming. So I formed an organization in 2001 to open this house up to the public. And I never intended it to become a museum, <laughs> which it has become, um, but merely to share it with the community. And it just was so well received that the community came in and really bestowed upon us all these wonderful antiques and artifacts. So it has become a museum because the community wanted it that way. And I'm just the vehicle to make it all happen. <laughs>